2016 meeting of the Village Board of Trustees to order at 6.30 p.m. There was a quorum and the agenda was properly posted. You all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'll take nominations for Chairman Pro Tem for the February 15, 2016 Village Board meeting. I'll nominate John. I was just going to kind of nominate you, Jack. <laughs> Spreads the law. Yeah. Second. <laughs> been a motion and a second to nominate John. John, do you accept? I do. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Take it away. All right. Uh, I don't think we have any public appearances, correct? No. Okay, so we'll move on to, to item six, discuss and consider the minutes for the regular meeting of the Village Board on <coughs> February 1st, 2016. Motion to approve as presented. I'll second. There's been a uh, motion and second. Any discussion? Having none, then we'll uh, proceed to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, presentations to the board? None. Item eight, unfinished business. 8A, discuss and consider potential citizen appointments to openings of various village committees and commissions. Um, first one being planning commission. One sentiment, citizen vacancy uh, currently. And we have, uh, looks like, two nominations. One for Don Meyer and the other one for Mick Con Conrad. So we're going to take them separately, I'm assuming. Let's make one comment. So. Uh, <coughs> We had maybe six months to a year ago um, received comment from Rob, we Rob Weisey, who's a um, commissioner right now, and he suggested to us that he um, was looking to maybe step down, but he was convinced to stay on at the time because we needed people. Um, so we circled back with him, given that we ended up with uh, two people looking to get on now, and, and he said that if you guys have interested parties, he would um, relinquish his seat. So, so there are two, there two, are two available uh, citizen spots. So that makes it easy. One of the one of the positions is up this May, 2016. So they would have it for two months and then hopefully be reappointed if um, President Zoe chooses at that time. The other one expires in 2018. So you will have you'll have to distinguish which one oh, goes in which. Did he officially resign the position? I mean, is it actually available? He, um, I think uh, he and Aaron uh, communicated today, and and Rob will s submit a formal resignation. So uh, he's he's wanted to get off for a period of time, and after considerable begging, meeting he stayed. And we may continue to beg. You know, so. <laughs> I've run out of pigs, I guess. Um, Do we know which, which one is up in May? Rob's. Rob's is up in May. Okay. So, <clears throat> does uh, anybody on the board want to make a motion for either of these candidates to be filling that first spot through May for Rob? So oh. if I, go ahead. Uh, if I understand what you're looking for correctly, um, and we have two open positions. Um, is that any? No, oh, that doesn't matter. Um, so I guess make a motion for Don Brinkmer to be appointed to the Planning Commission for the next two months to be reaffirmed. In April of you know, for the seat to be revalidated in April of 2016. A second. Okay, there's been a motion and second to nominate Don uh, for plan commission through May, uh, filling Rob's position. All those in favor? Or, I'm sorry, any discussion? All right.
All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Anybody opposed? Motion passes. So then we need uh, a motion then to? Motion to approve Mick Conrad for appointment to plan commission expiring in 2018. Second. Okay, there's been a, a motion and a second to nominate Mick Conrad for the uh, term expiring in 2018 for plan commission. Any discussion on that nomination? All, all right, then all those in favor? Two Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. So item B under unfinished business update Gaston Road ROW permit. I'm assuming Lee you will have comments. Um, I thought I would give you a somewhat lengthier presentation on this because it's got some implications for a variety of projects and matters. Um, the village submitted a, uh, an application to the town on November 20, 2015, a right, requesting a, uh, a permit to work in their right-of-way. And um, this is actually governed by uh, the town ordinance, also state statute, and also a portion of the um, administrative code. And really kind of from the beginning, the town has treated this more as a, um, as a negotiation and, and there were a lot of items placed on the permit that, um, that the village questioned, but the village went along with, with most of these because um, the, you know, we, we wanted to get the permit, we wanted to move on. And some of the limitations that um, restrict the kinds of conditions that can be put on here, um, the uh, PSC specifically has dealt with where it says the PSC is a public service commission and they've recognized that sometimes uh, adjoining municipalities don't always agree on things like this. Um, but their limitation is that there needs to be a determination of health, safety, and public welfare related matters involved with the um, with the granting of the permit or putting these certain conditions on. So there was a round of um, um, negotiations following uh, the town's initial draft of these conditions that followed uh, a closed meeting that they had um, a half hour before uh, their board meeting and we thought that we had gotten gotten things um, settled at the January 13th 2016 Utility Commission meeting um, Chairman Hampton was there and um, <coughs> after extensive discussion the Utility Commission approved um, a revision to the paragraph uh, requesting the town to provide a list of citizens uh, that there would be a one one-year warranty with a bid alternate for the town to choose from, um, that any road work would be restored to as good condition, um, any costs that uh, were going to be incurred uh, would be capped at $10,000 as provided in the PSC administrative code, and the village would uh, had also agreed to bid um, an alternate for milling and paving the other half of the road to consider. So we thought that this was agreed to and then um, prior to the, uh, or following the February 1st, uh, 2016 town board meeting, we were informed that the town had uh, unilaterally inserted the following language that the, they did away with the $10,000 um, cap and that said the village would pay all costs incurred by the town for management function and other reasonable costs as enumerated in Wisconsin stats um, Administrative 130, Village acknowledges the services resulting in management functions costs may be provided by the town superintendent of public works, town clerk, town treasurer, town engineer, and the town attorney is deemed prudent and necessary by the town. All such fees shall be reimbursable at the same rate actually paid by the town. All such, fee, um, all such fees shall be reimbursable at the same rate actually paid by the town for the services and reimbursed by the village shall occur within 45 days of the date of the invoice. And um, this was presented to the um, Utility Commission and their response um, following their own closed session was to direct staff to um, go to the Public Service Commission and which is allowed under the statutes um, and 
they would not agree with the conditions that have been placed on the town uh, in the town uh, permit and to go to the Public Service Commission and um, ask to have the, the minimum number of conditions um, approved by the PSC. So that's where we are right now. And how often does the PSC meet? So we're in the process of finding out. Uh, they, they will usually expedite these types of um, situ these types of hearings. Um, they they go through a two step process. The first is to try to have the parties mediate and uh, um, make that. I'm hoping that that would be successful here. Um, but at some at one at some point, John, the, uh, the the utility commission just felt that, that the conditions were too much to um, agree to. So there's no action needs to be taken by the board, but I did want to give you an update. All right. <clears throat> Let's move on then to item C and under eight unfinished business. Discuss and consider Deer Grove EMS proposal to purchase up to two ambulance chassis in 2016 of uh, district reserve fund balance. Um, I think we had the discussion prior to this on this item. Harvey, did you want to bring well, up the Actually, I, I'm going to ask Jack to bring his report, if it's all right with everybody else. I would like for Jack's report on Deer Grove EMS staffing, for him to explain what he did. Sure. Um, I re-familiarized with myself with Excel graphs and spreadsheets today. Um, I went through about six months, the last half of 2015. Um, we'd been talking about the staffing at Station 1, which is here, and Station 2 in Deerfield, and uh, versus the call volume. And so you have a sort of a couple of graphs here in front of you. I, was there a second page to this, Deb? Oh, yeah, okay. All right. So I just, yeah, the pie chart on the back. <coughs> So basically some of the concern was, although the staffing at both stations is su substantially equal, you can see in the second graph the volume of calls in the village of Cottage Grove and um, Town of Cottage Grove is, well, Town of Cottage Grove is a little bit lower, but our, our call volume in the village is, well, it's 40% of the um, calls for the year last year is the village of Cottage Grove. Town of Cottage Grove is 20%. Deerfield is like 17%, and then there's some odd calls to Madison, McFarland, wherever um, that the pie chart is coming from on the back. And the pie chart has come from the year-end report submitted by Chief Urson uh, at the end of December. So uh, does anybody have any questions? I also emailed this to Jennifer because I knew she wasn't going to be here tonight. But That's, I went back six months. I figured that would give a reasonable picture of where staffing is versus call volume. One thing that I guess that particularly struck me in the third graph is the uh, month of July? December, I'm sorry. We had like 12 days where there was no ambulance here in the village. Um, and Deerfield had like two days where there was no ambulance in their village, so, yeah, we have the majority of the calls. <coughs> and I'm just supplying the data because I was asked to, and I think if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. What's the, so the middle chart, mm -hmm. titled call volume by municipality July through December 2015. What's the units on the side? So it goes like Can July is up to almost 40, 30, yep. what, is, what does that mean? So that's that's 30? 40 calls for the village of Cottage Grove month of July. For the month of July, okay. Call, so it's actual calls, okay. Yeah. And then part of the concern is the geography of our district. I mean, if you know look where Pleasant Springs is, it's south and, yeah. you know, it's something to think about, I guess. Do we know if Deerfield or Town of Cottage Grove has acted on? This proposal at this point on the staff I don't know that any I, I just presented it to us here tonight I no I mean on the oh, on the on ambulances the, I have yeah. no idea did you guys vote on an ambulance Chris or? we did okay to wait until after the audit was done 
Okay. Want to see what the actual numbers are. Okay. Did you try to correlate the days of a call versus day staff? Um, how many I, calls were basically how many calls were fielded where we were not staff? I did. That's got a little complex. Maybe I'll ask for your help with okay. that. Okay. <laughs> because it's really only a problem if there's multiple calls, calls, and no one here to answer it. That's, right. It's, you know, it's a response time issue yeah. versus, you know, yeah. basically putting the people where the majority of the calls are. Is kind of <clears throat> Do we have an agreement in place on how long and kind of how long this agreement lasts? Uh, the current agreement lasts until December 31st of 2022, unless. Um, there's a um, unless a municipality gives notice to withdraw. Okay. Does it go into breakdowns in there on kind of the proposal on breakdown? On coverage, you mean, or what? No, on like for the price, it goes into it. It seems like on the front end, but it doesn't on the back end, or is it? Oh, is it the, vague? the proposal for the two ambulances? Or the yeah. Well, yeah, they're proposing to trade in, but it the two thousand nine or the two thousand thirteen. I guess. From what I'm gathering, it seems like it's kind of clear on the front end, but it's not really clear on the back end on how that's handled. Does does it say anything in there on that end? I didn't see anything. I guess based on our discussion of, of, of last time uh, when Lieutenant Mullen and, and Chief Urshan were here and the discussion that we had wa with, with the uh, issues of the village budget and, and the planning that the village has done, uh, it, it, it doesn't seem practical, I guess, for the village uh, to plan for, for, two, for two ambulances uh, in 2017. Uh, we're planning for one, but we haven't been planning for two. Uh, right. So, and we still actually do owe money on the, the lifeline, the one that was purchased in 2012-13. So that becomes a problem. Right, because we'd have debt service on a vehicle we no longer have then. Correct. That audit still take place? When is audit done, Christine? The audit, when, when will that be done? Uh, they were in the office, not last week, the week before. Okay. So they thought that they would have preliminary sometime in, in March, but the final would be in time for the April commission meeting. Kyle, I think it's going, be, going back to your question. Uh, any non-budgeted capital expenditure requires a majority vote of all members of the commission um, and a majority vote of the municipalities. Um, and then um, as far as ownership of assets, it says that, that um, it vests in the district, but each municipality shall be deemed to have an equity interest in the assets of the district um, and then there's a formula for, for calculating mm -hmm. that. Okay. So we do own part of the lifeline as part of the contract. So we can give it up for collateral if, if the audit, you know, <coughs> it's a cost to give up our 60, 52%, whatever the numbers were that they showed us. 52, yeah. Yeah. Present, I think it's stable. Yeah. 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 At least stable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would agree to the. If we're going to vote on it, but, but we can at least table it till after the audit because we don't know where the final numbers are either. But, uh, like Matt said too, like what Harvey just said, I think if we went with two ambulances, that would tie up capital funds to the point where we wouldn't have much left for other things. Is that right, Matt? Um, I mean, it depends on what we'd get for a trade-in and how much reserves would be used and those kind of things, but. I think it's just more of a matter of, do 
do you want to, would, would you want to buy two in the same year and then have to buy two again eight years down the road in the same year? Or would you rather buy mm -hmm. one every four years? Right. So you keep up better with technology and things like that. And I guess the other thing to remember too, and I don't, and I don't know how, how firm the, how, whether or not the, the request from um, the ambulance committee at e, uh, at EMS, uh, they wanted an answer so they could determine whether or not to go ahead and order the chassis. Right. Uh, they wanted an answer by this month's EMS commission meeting. So I don't know, has that, it, okay, that's been changed. Well, they aren't going to get it. They aren't going to get it. <laughs> okay. So do we need a motion to table it until, the, until they get the order? Yeah. Do, we need, do you need a motion, John? Yes. Okay, so I'll motion to table um, the decision for the Deer Grove EMS uh, purchasing of two new ambulances. Until they second. Come. Okay, it's been motion and second to table the discussion of ordering two chassis, ambulance chassis. Uh, any discussion? All right, then seeing, seeing none, all, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? Okay. Moving on, uh, new business. I don't think we have anything. So item 10, reports from village boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, community Development Committee. Okay, we met uh, last Monday. Uh, we had a, a healthy discussion uh, about working with the Chamber and development of a visitor guide. We talked more about retail gap analysis and loan grant programs, and I'll let Aaron fill in a few of the details. Nothing was, nothing was decided. Sure, the discussion with the Chamber about the visitor guide stemmed from a recommendation from the hotel study we looked at, uh, which pointed out that there really wasn't a visitor-oriented guide here in the village. Um, so the recommendation at the last CDA meeting was to reach out to the Chamber and see if there's some way to collaborate on maybe a web page or something. And after talking to them, they were already working on a revamped version of the community guide they used to do that'll be um, expanded and will include a visitor element. It's also going to have an online uh, component, so I think we'll be able to use that as a as a visitor guide and also as a marketing tool when we reach out to companies. So I think that'll be good. Um, or if you mentioned the retail gap analysis, we looked at two different sources of information. One study that the chamber had done earlier this year, and then Kyle Adams from Rudabush brought in some updated data related to um, a couple of different retail market analysis and also a restaurant market analysis. So we at the CDA discussed the trends that were apparent in those studies and the direction was to uh, have staff here work with Rudabush on a, a more specific retail recruitment strategy. And then we've, for the past few meetings, been talking about um, different loan and grant programs that are available in other communities in Dan and Rock County and it's kind of imagining that if the village had one, what would it look like and what would the objectives be? Um, so I think we've narrowed it down to three objectives and then we started talking about some of the criteria. Um, I think we're coming to the realization that we really need to look at what the funding source would be and what kind of constraints that would put on the criteria. So that's going to be the next step for that process. So obviously that's something we'll bring here if the CDA so desires when we have a, a greater level of detail to it all. Is it? All right. <clears throat> uh, next committee is Emergency Government Committee. That's uh, one I'm involved in. We are going to be conducting a table talk top exercise. Uh, that being uh, something of, of a large scale disaster or simulation on March 2nd, uh, 6:30 to 8:30 in the Emergency Building. I actually need a trustee to take my spot since I'm going to be out of town due to work commitment. So I'll be twisting arms later because I need to let the chairman know uh, who that person will be. So um, there will be a little bit of prep work to involve, but I don't know yet what that is because that, uh, that information hasn't come yet. <coughs> so don't leave tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Early, quickly. 
Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, we met last Thursday. Uh, a couple of things that uh, we talked about was uh, where the, the police attendant is, uh, position is in background check right now. Uh, also, uh, public work hire, public work technician hiring is in process. Uh, and the uh, village clerk position uh, job description was uh, approved and uh, will, has it been posted, Matt, then? Yeah, the uh, position's been posted and uh, it'll be posted through February 29th, uh, due February 29th at 5 o'clock. Um, then Deb and I will narrow the list down to finalists, somewhere between three and six, depending on how many we, re we receive and uh, how qualified they are. Um, then we'll uh, shoot for interviews, likely middle of March, March 14th through 16th is what we're looking at. Um, generally, the for a uh, department head level position like this, the interview committee has been myself and Deb, and then village president and the chair of the finance personnel committee um, without the president right now the committee uh, decided on Harvey uh, joining that as well he's a member of finance personnel so um, the four of us will do the interviews and then uh, hopefully have uh, an accepted offer and an appointment to you all either the last meeting in March March 21st or the, or the first uh, meeting in April. So, um, and then also the Public Works Tech actually, uh, Harvey, we're looking to post that in March with a start date late, late April, early May. And the lieutenant position uh, pending the background check should be starting with us sometime in the next month. So that's about it. All right. That's it for now. <coughs> Public Works Committee. Yeah, public works. Okay, um, I guess two core things. One we've been talking about on and off is the conservancy court, the, the marsh area. Uh, so the, just a little history, there's runoff from one of the farms. The, the silter <coughs> changed the distribution of the water and has been causing the neighbors some issues. That was went out for permits with the DNR and one of the other people. DNR? Army Corps. The Army Corps. And the permits were approved. Uh, looking at the budget, we talked about this a few meetings back. Was you know it's going to be in excess of the twenty-five thousand dollars, so we had to go out for bids and stuff. So we talked about it, talked about it with uh, staff, also talked about it offline in the meetings, and decided that to bid it out in late summer so that we can get it into the budget for twenty seventeen because it's an unbudgeted item and coming in um, at sort of the the napkin estimates, we were like uh, let's let's push this. So there was some communications to the neighbors in the area. Uh, if you have any questions, um, let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll answer them as best as we can on that timeline. Second thing we were talking about, uh, which I'll only mention it once, but we talked about it in both of the committees, was the Adaptive Management Intergovernmental Agreement. So basically, the, the village runs the water department, the village runs the sewer department, and then also there's a storm water control program that's put in place um, that we have to adhere to. So this is this is new. Um, JJ has a lot of information on it, so he can probably speak better to it. So we can direct some of the questions to him. I'm glad he's here. Uh, but basically what it what it means is that Cottage Grove is going to have to account for the storm water that we generate during storms and look kind of where it goes. It's, it's a lot to do with phosphate control, runoff, um, how do you meter it? You can't because it just sort of runs everywhere. Um, so it's quite a significant proposal. So we reviewed it in Public Works uh, and then tabled it. Um, moving over to Public Utilities, we brought it up there as well because we were trying to figure out who's the owner of this. Is it a utility or is it a properties issue? And so we then talked about it in utilities. So is there any questions on Public Works and Properties before I... So with John's permission, I'll move to utility. Please move to utility, okay. Commission. New folder. Moving over to utility, we talked about this adaptive management intergovernmental agreement. 
And so what we're really talking about trying to connect these two committees together is really holding a joint session next month and going over all the details in a little bit more intimacy and find out what's the ins and outs and who needs to control what and then really determine where it's going to live and then come back to the board with a proposal of how to handle all of these ins and outs and where to deal with it. So it's something that's coming. It's on the radar. JJ, what's the due dates for this? Sorry to pull you into this conversation, but... They, they wanted all the IGAs by the end of March. The end of March. I don't know how close they are yeah. getting involved. The way we looked at our timelines of setting up the meetings, it's going to be plenty of time for the to get the information in front of the board to get the final decisions and stuff made. So, so that's coming. Um, what else did we talk about? Um, something important. So we discussed maintenance of well one as well. So this is the well on Main Street. I guess it's at the bottom of the hill um, from the elementary school on the side there and apparently we were we've been maintaining that uh, for some use hydrate was using some testings and they were they were sort of doing something with it and but they're really not no one's really consuming any water out of it so we started discussing why are we maintaining this thing when we really don't need it so that's kind of on the radar right now as to um, maybe demo it and, and what to do with the property and all that other stuff so um, about five or six years ago there was a big push to enter an agreement with hydrate um, Hydrate was going to do something in conjunction with a uh, Canadian university and they were going to do testing at the well site and um, apparently at some point uh, they decided that that was kind of cost prohibitive to do and so um, Hydrate is not pursuing this at all so uh, I, I have a call into a contact person at Hydrate just asking to make sure that they don't want anything more to do with it. That was what I was told last April by him, so just wanted to confirm that. Uh, the other big thing we talked about, obviously, was the, um, the right-of-way permit for uh, Gaston, the Gaston Road water main. And right now, the way that project stands is we're waiting for permits to be approved, and then the projects are going to go out to bid. And so we're waiting for all the details of, the, of the, what the permit looks like, and then we'll have a proper package uh, for, for a bid package. And so that's where that project's at. That's all I got. All right, let's move on to reports from village officers. Kyle Broom. All right, lots to talk about tonight. So <laughs> um, we just kind of got done going over the reports. And one of the things I've been kind of thinking about is possibly looking at changing even the way that's worded on the agenda more into like discussions, recap of reports. Um, and I'd like to also kind of see the agendas attached to the packet um, just so I study the, the, the main board packet so closely and it sparks questions. And the way that the reports kind of come across, it's more of just a reporting and it doesn't really open up for discussion in a sense. And um, There's times where people chime in and say things, but I think that there could be a little bit more clarity of what's going on in the committees and um, stuff like that. So I'd like to kind of bring that up for discussion, I guess. Kyle discussed this with me and, and um Correct if I'm wrong, Kyle. But w one of the thoughts was if you had if you had the agenda right in front of you, even though even though we send them out in a separate email, if we put them in the packet, it's right in front of you at this meeting. And uh, as someone's going through their report, um, maybe an item that was discussed at a committee meeting was rather insignificant, but you have a question about it specifically. Um, it can be a reminder for you having the agenda right in front of you. You can ask that person. You know what was the discussion on this item so I talked with that it doesn't sound like it's a, a problem to add that in benefit the person giving the report too probably so they don't forget something right helps trigger things like that. okay so um, kind of going along those lines I don't know I kind of um, mentioned so planning was canceled this week because of lack of quorum um, so there wasn't a report given um, but like just kind of working on the communication I don't know if there's like a lead person on each topic if they can get directly emailed um, and brought aware of that and then also um, making sure it hits the website and that it's canceled on there just to kind of work on making sure people aren't showing up and and thinking these meetings are going on and showing up to a locked door yeah. so was there a sign posted that it was canceled um, I don't believe so this time 
So okay. we can improve on that going forward. Perfect. And then kind of going into the next topic here, um, I want to talk about possibly doing joint um, board meetings. Uh, first off with the town, I kind of want to see what we can discuss kind of the vision of what they're thinking, what we're thinking on over the next five years, 10 years, 15 years on topics or um, growth and, and things like that. I know that I haven't had a a joint meeting with them since I've been elected. It's almost been a year. Um, there's rumblings from time to time on both sides of the boards on, well, I didn't know that that was a vision. And I think if we got in a room every six months or a year to try to um, discuss these things, uh, maybe even get the chamber involved um, to try to work on uh, that future growth it would be a very positive thing. Um, I don't know if you have any input on that. We used to meet jointly, but that's been a while, I think. I don't know how long. I think we met every month. Actually. Okay. Every month? Yeah. Which, I, I don't know if it's necessary, but. Maybe that's why it faded out, because it just was too much. Ran maybe. out of things that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, quarterly, half, every half year, every year, mm -hmm. something like that to kind of um, discuss. It's probably vision. not a bad idea, but I really would like to wait until after the spring election just so that there's more formality with with a with a head so to speak just so that there's a, a there is a village president that can can be uh, kind of the the guider for uh, the board in that regard so yeah, I'd like to come back to this is what I'm saying well yeah as long as it's kind of on a on a point of, of discussion and make sure that there's some preparations and, and some vision on what that would look like, um, whether the chamber gets involved, whether or not. I mean, this goes out to the school board as well. Um, you know, I'd be interested in possibly having a, a, a meeting with the school board from a village level just because, you know, there's a referendum coming up and I've heard very little about it. And, uh, you know, we're the ones that get all the questions and all the kind of discussions on these things. Yeah, the school board's an interesting one, Kyle, if I may. I mean, because the, you hear a lot of stuff with the different developments. It was a school board note, it was a school board note. I mean, I don't know that you've ever, this is, I'm sure there's communications all the time, but to put that formal face, you know, there's a referendum, is it good or is it bad? Um, you know, they could gain seven sponsors to help them. They could, they could get seven people that says, hey, you're, you're kind of offline, and, and steer them back in the right direction. And so. Right now, I, I have nothing from them, so I don't know what I would, you know, I have no information to help people make a decision, so. Right, it kind of puts us in a tough spot, and I'd just like to open up those communications somehow to, to look into this a little further, um, so. So when, when's the April election, the April election's April, April 4th? 4th, 4th, 5th, Tuesday? 5th. To Tuesday. So when does the office go and act? Going in effect? Third Tuesday, the president goes into effect. There's the lame duck meeting. That's the second meeting in April. Not sure. I'm the 18th waiting. would be the lame duck lame meeting. Duck. So yes. May 2nd is the. Well, the president actually starts on April 19th, the third Tuesday in April. But we won't have a board meeting until the first one in May, which is May 2nd. Okay. Yep. And committees start. May 1st. Yep. Are you? I like it. I don't, I don't, this is me, but. Is that something that you've done in the past? Well, Kyle, I think it's just to put it on as a future agenda item. And in that first week in May. Those two items. Yeah, just so we don't lose that way, they'll yeah. they'll get on the agenda, I mean, right? You just table it to a date certain. That date certain would be the first meeting in May. Yeah. Well, I guess the problem is the school board referendum is going to be in April. So if we get in front <laughs> of the school board before April, that well, would be no. I, yeah, awesome. yeah, it depends about what, what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go. If we can, I mean, well, if you really want to do something. And, and we want to have a productive meeting. It doesn't have to be something super drawn out. We can just say, hey, we, you got this referendum. It's a big deal. And maybe, you know, so how can we do that? 
direct. Is this something we can direct staff to help set up? February. That's not for uh, school board. Oh, well, okay. I thought they were being better. That was for to, um, trustee questions. So. <clears throat> yeah, Alex, to respond to your question, I mean, I can reach out to Superintendent Olson and let him know that our board is interested in having a meeting with them to discuss yeah. the referendum. The referendum would be probably the key. Put them on the agenda. Anyway. So, yeah. and, that and we can see what in either yeah. they have to say, but um, you know, it's never easy to coordinate everyone's schedules for. Well, even if you can't get all of them, right? You yeah. can't get all of us. I mean, it's it's it'll be on TV. It'll be posted. We'll be able to maybe give questions <coughs> to. Yeah. Other people who are there, at least just get the information out. And so if you guys have a suggested date or time, that would be helpful. I'll get the conver I guess get the conversation for started. I mean, you know our schedules. Even if they came to one of the board meetings, we cleared it off. I think started middle early. middle March would be uh, good. There you go. Yeah. All right. Good job. All right, Jack. Uh, the report on the staffing is what you have in front of you here with the graphs. If anybody has any questions, just let me know. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. On the, I'm just reading around. On the I guess it's this page with the pie chart. Yep. It says, the type, first one is first responder staffing in total hours by station. So if I look at July, you're saying CG was staffed for 50 hours? For a total of 50 hours for the month. But then when you go out on the other page, mm -hmm. the first chart says, Crew staffing by December, and then we have like 5,000 or 500. Hours. That's also measured in hours, okay. in total hours. But because you're staffing two people on a crew, and there's more staffing for crews than there is for first responders. First responder is the is the car. Is the, right? yeah. is, the is the interceptor yeah. with one person who may or may not be a paramedic. May oh, not. this is the third vehicle. This is the intercept. This is the car. yeah. This correct. is not the okay. 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 Yep. Okay. I get. It. So this is really the, the ambulance is staffed first, and then yeah, this the ambulance is what's staffed. Always staffed somewhere. And this is staffed next. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. So there's days it, it wasn't staffed at all. Correct. Okay. I get it. Perfect. So we certainly can take that to the, the joint EMS committee. Mm -hmm. uh, Harvey and I can. I know that the uh, chief was directed to try to show different, a different way of doing the stats for coverage Right. Because um, it's clear what we've seen thus far is not not reality. It's it's definitely something in, in between that. So, and okay. everyone recognizes that. So they wanted to try to get a better way of coming just a different it. report yeah. format. Yeah, and, and this certainly would be just another view of that. And sure. Certainly, the chief wants to make sure. And all of this information working. came from the commission reports that he'd given to the commission last year. So it's all out there. Yeah. So so I think that's that'll be a good discussion item. Yeah, and to put it in perspective, that chart that I was just asking about, mm -hmm. we were staffed for like looking at the numbers, 50 hours for that extra vehicle for the month of July. Right. Um, but Station Two had that extra vehicle staffed for 200 hours. Correct. So a significant variation, and then when you look at the call volume, it's definitely skewed it is. more to the to the west, mm -hmm. the south. So. Okay. Good. Makes sense. Actually, the more I think about it, I, don't, I guess, Harvey, why do we want to wait to have a joint meeting with the town until after the election? Very I just think it's important that we have, we have an official head of the board. Kind of already know who that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> just for Yeah, for but officially, I mean, officially we don't right, right. now. So. All right. I don't know if but necessarily I, but I agree it's a good thing to do once in a while. We just don't need to do it every month. Yeah, it doesn't no, no, no. I don't want it to be every You're gonna month. burn out. Yeah. But I want some kind of some long term discussions. Um, sure. and I understand wanting to have um, uh, the president in that, so I but I still think we can work on getting that organized and even if it is for May or June. I, I, yeah, as long as it's after April, I don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even after the election. Right. You know. That's right. That's but I think the school board thing is the good one to have. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll do it in time. All right. All right. Alex? No report. Kenneth is not here. Harvey? No report. Me? No report. Lee? No report. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not true. Yeah, I was going to say, you got 
an agreement here listed. Um, uh, the Thanks. first thing is that the Swanson, um, we did have a closing um, on the Swanson um, MC, MC Swanson Properties LLC site um, in the Commerce Park, and they expect to start work um, right away. So, I mean, and they want to be done, I think, by the end of August. Where do they want to be in? I think they have to be out of their current space by September. So that's uh, that's in full swing. Uh, the update on the Colonial Club agreement is that um, I've tried to model that agreement after the um, Youth Services Briar Patch Agreement, and I've been in contact with um, um, I'm blanking on his name. I'm having a senior moment. Um, <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Put that in. Bob Powers. Bob Powers. Yeah. And, um, and it indicated to him that we wanted to try to break out the um, specific services that are provided and have some way of being able to um, uh, give them a number, give them a, uh, that the board can look at and say, yeah, you have been, you know, you said you were going to do this and, you, and you've done it. So that there's um, some accountability as far as that's concerned. So hopefully we can have that back by, by the next next meeting or the meeting after that, sometime in March. All right. Thank you, Lee. Matt. Um, I don't have anything further. I kind of gave the report I was planning on giving earlier. So um, just we're working on filling those three open positions. All right. Aaron. Just one quick thing. I was contacted by the Dan County Parks Department uh, the other day. They've gotten some funding to do uh, some planning and design work on the Capital City uh, connector bike trail that will go from Madison and, and at the start of the Glacial Drumlin Trail. Uh, so they'll be starting some stakeholder meetings soon and I'll be going to those and as I get updates I'll let you know what's going on. But it's a project we've been hoping to get going for a long time. Do we have any timeline on what they're expecting? Um, I'm sure we'll find that out at the first meeting. Okay. All right. Just thought you'd give us a teaser or something like that. All right. <laughs> So I'll move on to item 12, communication and miscellaneous business. Uh, consider approval of vouchers as the first item. Motion to approve vouchers as presented. I'll second it. There's motion and second to approve the vouchers as presented. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Abstain? Okay. Pass. It's correspondence. None? None? Nope. Uh, future agenda items? Uh, colonial Club Agreement. Colonial Club Agreement, okay. Any others? Well, yeah, let me just ask in general um, if the board could uh, give feedback to um, Harvey or myself. Um, we aren't scheduling an ordinance meeting this month. Um, and we want to know if there, if any of you have ordinances that you want worked on, um, to give them to Harvey. We'll put them on the agenda, and um, as we talked about before, have the board review those and, and indicate that they want us to proceed with those specific ordinances. So if you've got something that um, you'd like to have us work on, um, please get that to Harvey, and, and we'll um, determine whether a meeting of the ordinance committee is necessary or not. All right. All right. Uh, item 13 is uh, closed session. Uh, Village of Cottage Grove uh, Board will enter into a closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 19.851C, uh, considering employment promotions, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over the government body jurisdiction of or exercise and responsibilities. Report on a 2015 employee uh, performance evaluations and pursuant to state statute 19.851E, uh, deliberating and or negotiating purchase of public property, investing in public funds, conducting other specified business uh, wherever competitive or and or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Negotiate terms of potential 
development of TIDS number six by Horizon Development Group Incorporated. Second. So I think this is a roll call, right? Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.